Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and just like that, we are back with a follow-up look at the RTX 4070 Ti. We're checking out the NO3D iChill X3 model, sporting a pretty eye-catching design. There's a 320 watt TGP, as well as a 60 MHz factory overclock. We're also going to take a closer look at exactly why this card ships with a triple 8-pin power adapter and whether or not it actually makes any difference versus a dual 8-pin configuration. Starting off then with a look at the design of the card, this is going to be immediately familiar to anyone who's already seen our review of the RTX 4080 iChill X3 as the shroud design is identical between the two cards. That means we get a pretty aggressive overall aesthetic and it's definitely not going to be to everybody's tastes but I have to say personally I do quite like it. The shroud itself is made mostly from plastic but there are a couple of grey metal plates that are screwed on top of the shroud which are purely for aesthetic reasons. We can also note three 98mm fans with the central fan spinning in reverse which is an increasingly popular feature and it just helps to reduce overall airflow turbulence thus increasing airflow pressure down onto the heatsink itself. In terms of the dimensions the 4070 Ti i2 X3 is again identical to the 4080 version in this regard so it's a fairly large card measuring in at 334 by 148 by 62 millimeters. It also weighs in at 1.66 kilograms, so it's a little bit on the hefty side, but at least Inno3D does include a fairly basic graphics card holder to help prevent any GPU sag. As expected, we do find a metal backplate is fitted to the rear of the PCB, and this does cover the length of the card, but we can see several large cutouts towards the end, which will just help aid airflow. The backplate is decorated with lots of small triangles as well, which are purely for aesthetic reasons. Just like the RTX 4080 iChill X3, however, it is worth making clear that there's no dual BIOS on this graphics card, something we'll come back to at the end of the video. Speaking of aesthetics, I also really like the RGB lighting, which is found on the front side of the card. It definitely matches the overall kind of in-your-face aesthetic. By default, it does this rainbow style effect out of the box, but Inno3D does actually include an ARGB cable that you can use to synchronize the card's LEDs with the rest of your system, if that is your preference. Power is of course supplied by the 12 volt high power connector, but interestingly, Inno3D actually includes a triple 8 pin adapter, despite the 320 watt TGP. For context, the Gigabyte Gaming OC 4070 Ti that I have already looked at can actually hit up to 340 watt TGP, but that card only comes with a dual 8 pin adapter. So stay tuned for later on in this video where I do actually do some testing and we find out whether or not the triple 8 pin adapter is really necessary. Spoiler alert, it isn't. Moving on though, it's actually only when we look internally where we can see the biggest differences in design between the 4070 Ti and the 4080 iChill X3 cards. The PCB for instance has actually been redesigned and it does somewhat resemble one of the Nvidia Founders Edition PCBs with the V-shaped design. In terms of the VRM, Inno3D is using an 11 phase solution for the GPU with two phases for the memory. 55 amp Alpha and Omega AOZ 5311 NQI MOSFETs are used across the board. We can also see that two rich tech controllers are deployed with an RT8848C used for the GPU VRM and there's an RT8843B for the memory VRM. The cooler has also been tweaked compared to the RTX 4080 model. For one, instead of a shared base plate for the GPU and the VRM, here the GPU contacts with a nickel plated copper base plate while the memory contacts with a separate aluminium base plate. There's a total of seven 6mm heat pipes that are used to draw heat away from the GPU and memory but there's also an extra heat pipe added in which is used for MOSFET cooling. Lastly, Inno3D is again using thermal pads on the underside of the backplate 
It's only a minor point, but it is always something that we like to see. Time to move on to testing then, where we are using our regular GPU test system, which is powered by MSI. So this is built on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, and that's paired with the MSI Meg Z690 Unify motherboard, while we've also got 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URQD 4K monitor. Starting off our testing then with a look at thermal performance. This is actually a pretty strong area for the iChill X3. It may not be quite as cool running as the gaming OC, with a peak GPU temperature of 63 degrees, but do remember that these are out of the box thermal results, so noise levels are not yet taken into account. Memory thermals are similarly excellent with a peak temperature of just 58 degrees. Again, that is a touch warmer than the gaming OC, but I really don't think there's any meaningful benefit to the memory running at 54 degrees instead of 58 degrees, so it's really just an academic point. As for noise levels though, the iChill X3 really is a very quiet card. The three fans spun up to just 36% or about 1180 RPM in our testing, and that produced just 35 decibels of noise, making it quieter than even the gaming OC using its silent BIOS. There was also no audible coil whine during my testing. We actually had to increase fan speed up to 50% or 1570 RPM to hit 40 decibels for our noise normalized testing, where there's really very little to split between the iChill X3 and the gaming OC. The iChill X3 does run fractionally hotter, but only by a couple of degrees when looking at the hotspot temperature, so both are clearly excellent cooler designs. Likewise, for the memory thermals, the iChill X3 actually comes in 2 degrees cooler, but the results are so low anyway, it's really not consequential. Moving on then to power draw, despite the iChill X3's 320 watt TGP, real world power draw is much lower, averaging just over 273 watts, so that's actually almost identical to the Gigabyte Gaming OC. We know that the 4070 Ti is more often voltage limited than it is power limited, so even with a higher power limit on the iChill X3, it really doesn't matter that much. That's reflected when looking at the overall clock speed as well, as the iChill X3 averaged 2821 MHz over our 30 minute stress test, so that's literally just a 1 MHz difference compared to the Gigabyte Gaming OC. We actually found that the iChill initially boosted up to 2835 MHz for about the first 90 seconds or so, before dropping back down to 2820 MHz where it remained for the rest of our stress test. As expected, that really does mean there's very little to split between these two 4070 Ti cards in terms of the gaming benchmarks. Over the 5 games I tested, the iChill X3 was never more than 1% faster than the Gigabyte Gaming OC, so they really are as fast as each other. That's not a bad thing though, but it does explain why we never recommend buying one particular card over another based on its factory overclock, as it really does mean very little these days. Just before we get to the overclocking results then, I do want to spend a little bit of time looking into the triple 8-pin power adapter situation. As mentioned earlier in this video, I did find it a bit odd that NO3D includes a triple 8-pin power adapter, despite the Gigabyte Gaming OC only coming with a dual 8-pin adapter, and that card can actually increase its TGP to over 20 watts above the iChill X3. So I did actually ask NO3D about why they did this, and I am waiting for clarification, but their response seemed to be that the iChill X3 doesn't actually draw any power through the PCIe slot. Instead, it's getting all of its power through the PCIe cables. So considering it's 320 watt TGP, that's why it needs the extra 8-pin connector. However, I wasn't fully buying this explanation, so I decided to put it to the test using NVIDIA's PCAT tool. So we're able to measure power draw from all three of the 8-pin power connectors, as well as the PCIe slot. As it turns out, I was right to be skeptical, as the PCIe slot is still pulling exactly 27 watts 
using the iChill X3. We can also see that the first 8-pin power connector is actually doing very little, pulling just under 21 watts, while both of the other two 8-pin connectors are actually pulling over 100 watts each. Considering then that the gaming OC was still running perfectly fine with just two 8-pin connectors, I decided to go ahead and physically unplug one of the 8-pin connectors from the iChill X3, and funnily enough, it still worked absolutely perfectly. We can see then that even with one of the 8-pins physically disconnected, this didn't actually cause any extra power to be drawn from the PCIe slot, as it was still pulling 27 watts. All that really happened was the second 8-pin pulled about 3 watts more, while cable 3 actually ended up pulling about 17 watts more power, while still remaining under 150 watts power draw. Based on that data then, I think it's fair to say the triple 8-pin adapter really is unnecessary. I also didn't experience any performance drop-off when running it with one of the 8-pins disconnected, and even when overclocking, it still hit exactly the same frequencies as when with all three 8-pins connected. Of course, it is hardly a big deal, and even the webpage for the 4070Ti iChill X3 does seem to suggest that it only needs two 8-pin power connectors, but I guess that just means it's even more confusing as to why Inno3D included the unnecessary triple 8-pin adapter. Moving on though, it's time to talk about overclocking. Here I ended up adding 195 megahertz to the GPU and 1200 megahertz to the memory. This may not be as impressive as what I achieved with the gaming OC, and it's also worth noting that the power limit is fixed at 100% and cannot be increased. Once overclocked then, the iChill X3 ran at 3060 MHz over our 30 minute stress test, making it exactly 30 MHz slower than what we managed with the gaming OC. This overclock then resulted in performance gains of between 7-9% to in the three games we retested, and that is fairly typical of an Ada Lovelace GPU. Power draw though did actually increase once overclocked up to 315 watts. Bear in mind this card has a 320 watt TGP, so even though we didn't increase the power limit when overclocking, there was still plenty of headroom for it to increase over stock settings. Wrapping everything up then, the Inno3D RTX 4070 Ti iTIL X3 is definitely a solid card, but I'd also say there is room for improvement with a couple of interesting design choices that I don't fully understand. Starting with the positives though, Inno3D definitely knows how to build an effective cooler. The iChill X3 runs very quiet and very cool, with fan noise hitting just 35 decibels and temperatures barely exceeded 60 degrees. I also personally really like the aggressive aesthetic as well as the matching RGB lighting, Though, I do also think it's fair to say this won't be for everybody. The main thing holding this card back though has to be the lack of dual BIOS. I've already mentioned this in a couple of my previous Inno3D GPU reviews, but considering this is the iChill which is their flagship card, dual BIOS really is a must-have feature in my opinion. And if I personally was shopping for a new graphics card in 2023, the lack of dual BIOS would definitely give me pause. We've already mentioned as well about the triple 8-pin power adapter, which really is just unnecessary, and although it is hardly a deal-breaker, I personally just don't understand why Inno3D opted for a triple 8-pin instead of a dual 8-pin adapter, as why use an extra power cable when it's not necessary? That being said, the iChill X3 does have the benefit of the fact that it's usually one of the more reasonably priced models, so even though at the time of filming I am still waiting for confirmed UK pricing, if it does have an attractive price point, it could make it that bit easier to overlook a couple of those negative points. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. While you're there, please do subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you won't miss out on any of our future uploads. In the description, you'll also find a link to our Discord server where we would love to chat with you guys. And while you're there, you can also head over to our brand new merch store where you can pick up a couple of cool t-shirts.
Lastly, it would be awesome if you would consider backing us on Patreon. But like I said, that's it for this one, guys. I'm Dominic Ford Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.